What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we are going to be going over controller connections and disconnections in our fighting game tutorial series. So, really any input device will work, but we're going to be using controllers specifically today, and we're going to be able to do this anywhere. On the menu, in the game, wherever we lose control, or, or lose access to a controller, we are going to want to pop up a menu based on if the controller connection has changed to disconnected, and also relay back the info on which player that controller was related to in the game. We will want to know this so we know what character paused the game, what character has to reconnect their controller, that sort of information. So I'm going to do a little demo here. I'll do one on the menu and one in the game just to show you. But we're on the main menu. So if I go down here, I'm going to pull out my USB for my wired controller right now. You can see that this controller or input device disconnected. Reconnect input device or press any button on connected input device. Menu has popped up. There's also a log that printed to the output log saying controller has been disconnected for player zero. We changed connection on our one input device, which was this controller that I'm using in this case. And since we lost connection of it, uh, we fired an event that created this widget and displayed it to the screen. We can do the opposite as well. So say I plug the controller back in. Now it goes away on its own and says controller has been connected for player zero. That's the player index, so player zero is player one. This also works for player two. But there you go. So we are actually able to pop up a message when the controller is disconnected. Technically it didn't stop any of my movement on the menus or anything because I could still use the keyboard as that was still connected. I still had two methods of controlling the game. However, you may want to stop listening for events when that pops up if you're on a menu, if you're worried about that. Right now, since I can control both of those, or, or control those menus by both input devices on purpose, I'm not worried about it. But when we get into things like packaging for a specific type of platform, say you only want to use controllers and not keyboard, then that is something you might want to look into, make sure it only works with this specific platform device type. So say let's go into our game and we will set up a second player Just load any level okay skip our intros and you can see my controller logic is working it's telling me what uh, type of device we have so player two is on the keyboard player one is on the controller now let's go ahead and disconnect our device And you can see that the menu popped up as expected. It says controller has been disconnected for player zero. Again, in this episode, we haven't paused the game or anything. I still control my character with a keyboard, that sort of thing. But this is just the base so that we can determine when controllers or other input devices are connected and disconnected in our game. We'll get into more advanced logic in the next episode based on these controller connections. One final time before we get started, let's plug our controller back in and see what happens. And there you go. So we did lose the menu, the widget went away. And now I have control over my character again with the gamepad. Alright, so with all that done, we can go ahead and get started with today's episode. But before we do, if you'd like to get caught up in the series, I believe we're on episode 140. I'll leave a link in the top right corner right here to the entire playlist so you can check out everything we've done to get to this point, as well as a few other episodes that are just beneficial to help you proceed along with your project. Alternatively, if you don't care about the fighting game specifically and you just care about controllers, I can link you to this episode right here, which is the first episode where we started going over this advanced controller logic. You can catch up and see how you can get these controllers working as we have them working in this series. To get started, we are going to go to the code and specifically want to go to our base game instance. 
So our base game instance.h is the main file we want to look at right now. And what we want to do in here is we want to know when the controllers connect and disconnect, when the connection status changes. So for that, what we can do is we can actually override a function that already exists within Unreal and then determine what logic we want to do from there. Like you saw, I was printing out logs and I was popping up the widget. That's the logic that we're going to do from there. But like I said, we can actually determine what logic we want to happen based off this event. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see a few new things in this function. You'll see this guy right here. You'll see an init function override. And then a custom function that I've made here as well. All right. Then you have one other variable down here. And that should be everything new in the .h file. So let's go through this one at a time. Let's start with this guy. So declare dynamic multicast delegate one param. Looks confusing, right? Well, we haven't done anything like this before, so it can definitely be confusing. But essentially, a delegate is an event that can be called and you can handle the logic for. So this is like a custom event in Blueprint. Like if we've gone into any of our Blueprints, let's go into, say, our base character BP, for example. Scroll around somewhere and say event perform input logic. Well, see, we have this event here. You could hook it up here. Right, you've seen us do this before, like on the character select screen. And then we can fill out the logic here. Uh, actually, because, because of that, that is a better example. Let's go to our character select screen. It's not important what we're doing in here for today's episode, but as an example, we have a function here that has a callback delegate. And so once this function is called, or really once this input action is met in this case, so if we press menu left P1, which is A on my keyboard. So if I press A, it's going to call this function great. It's going to go to this callback and say, all right, this is the logic we want to do. So from here, we go ahead and follow the execution line, just this white line, and then call everything in this path. So we're going to call move selection. Again, we're not using the character select screen here today. It doesn't matter. My point is, this is what a delegate is. You have this event that can be basically once an action occurs, like the controller status changing, then we can go and force it to trigger an event as a result. All right. So that's what a delegate is, first of all. Now, declare is just saying that we're going to create one. So we're creating one of these delegates and creating this event connection, okay? Now, you don't have to worry too much about this dynamic multicast section of this. Multicast is really related to networking, which we haven't done almost anything with yet. However, for this event to work properly, we do want it to be multicast because if it's not multicast, we won't be able to successfully connect this event as we want to in the a blueprint assignable section here. I know we haven't gotten that yet, but if you're curious, like, why are we doing this? I don't like to leave you in the dark. So technically, multicast and blueprint assignable don't cooperate well together. And so even though we're not doing anything with networking right now, if we don't put this in the dynamic multicast like this, it is going to throw us errors. So essentially think of it like this. We are making an event that is multicast for networking and it has one parameter. That's what one param is. There's also, we could do two param if you wanted. You could do two param. This would also work. We'd have to pass in other parameters, of course, and change a few things, but you can also do it that way. So instead we're going to use one param because we're passing it one parameter and I'm going to pass it the is connected parameter. Okay. So without, with this out of the way, you know that we're creating a delegate that way we are able to bind an event, say in a blueprint or other places in the code, and then perform logic based on any time that 
event is caught, when that delegate is caught. So this first parameter here in this declare is the type of class that we want to create. This is actually a name that we can create because we have to make a corresponding variable later. So you can call this whatever you want. Typically, I've seen it start with the prefix f because this is a class that gets created. So essentially, uh, f is like for structures and classes. But you can call it whatever you want. I called mine f controller connection changed. You can call this Fred if you wanted. It'll work no matter what. Just as long as you match this name and this name. Then we have to know what type of variable is going to be passed into this. We have one parameter. So this is our variable type. In this case, I want a Boolean because I'm going to know is connected. When we bind to this delegate, we get an event. And the event will have a parameter as well. It'll have basically this value that came in, so bool is connected, but this will be named based off of what we give it here. I know we haven't gotten here yet, but let me show you while we're doing this, so maybe it makes more sense. Essentially, we're making this binding right now, and we're going to connect it to this event. You see that this event has a boolean is connected. That's because in this delegate, we have boolean is connected. Okay, I did not create that. That is automatically generated based on the information we have in this delegate. All right. Now, that's the most complicated and confusing thing for today because we haven't messed with that yet. It'll make more sense as you, you make more of these. We'll make a lot more of these before the series is done. Don't worry. You'll see these all the time. Now, we need at least a value that matches this guy because we need to know that this class can be captured by this. If we don't have anything here, we can't broadcast the event when something changes. What it's going to do is say, yes, we have this event has been triggered. So I'd recommend following this sort of setup. Basically take the name that you gave this first parameter in the declare, set that as the variable type. Then give it a name and I called it controller connection changed event. Now I gave it U property data because we do want to be able to use it in the blueprint and bind to it. So I made sure it was U property, which was edit anywhere. Blueprint assignable. This will allow us to actually bind an event to it and then, you know, go ahead and connect the rest of our logic. So we definitely want to make sure that we can bind that custom event in the blueprint to that delegate. And then I still gave it a category under controller. All right, there's two other things we have to do in here. So the first one I'm going to do is override a function called init or initialize or initialization. This is essentially a constructor that is safer than the actual standard C++ constructor. And it is an Unreal specific constructor in this case. The base game instance isn't an actor, so it doesn't quite have a begin play, but the init would be close to a begin play. And it's better, it's safer for a lot of reasons, specifically in uh, non actor classes, because of the fact that the constructor can't be considered safe to set a lot of U objects or create or spawn actors or fill out arrays. And so this virtual void in it will allow us to kind of do things a little bit later in the pipeline when it is considered safe. And we're going to need to do this specifically for one thing that we're doing today, because we're going to call a function called you add you object. And that add you object is unsafe in the constructor and it can cause some unwanted behavior. Okay, so virtual void init override. And then lastly, I've written a function to actually capture everything that has occurred, right? So if the controller connection changes, we want to capture all the values about it. And then we want to go ahead and grab the important information. So 
Controller connection change means it can either connect or disconnect. So we need a Boolean is connected. There are different types of devices, and we're going to need to know that. And luckily, the function that we're going to be binding to actually captures this data right off the bat for us. So we might as well record that for future use. And then we also have the user ID, which is very useful for the player ID or the player controller. So we know what controller this, what, what player this controller belongs to. All right. Now with that all out of the way, let's go to the base game instance.cpp and let's take a look at a few things. Very first thing to look at is the includes. We're going to need this misc miscellaneous core delegates.h. Make sure you include that. If we don't include that line, we won't be able to call this line here, which we very much need to do because this is a custom Unreal event. We need to access it to be able to call our specific function when this is determined to occur. All right. So go ahead and set up your init right here. Void you base game instance init. And then start writing out this line. F core delegates on controller connection change dot add you object. This and then the function we want to call. So let me explain what this is now. So F core delegates is a class. We're just calling a static function. If you're not sure what that is, basically, this is a library of functions and we can just call them whenever we want from anywhere. The base game instance is a great place because we can do it at any point when this changes. It doesn't matter what game mode we're in. doesn't matter uh, if we have a controller plugged in at all, if a character spawned, if a menu's up, doesn't matter. So we can call this on controller connection change and add it, add a U object to it. Okay, what this whole line is doing is on controller connection change is an unreal function that determines when a controller has been connected or disconnected. It's not something we set up. We can essentially add an object that will track when that function is called and pass along the relevant data. In the parentheses of add you object, you have to give it the class that you're adding this on, as well as the function that you would like to call whenever this function gets called. So we want to call our function that we made, right? Because our function is this void controller connection change that we just set up. And this is where we can do our custom logic. So we want to call this function whenever this guy gets called. Now, notice I have this in the constructor commented out. That's because, again, this is unsafe. You can technically do it there, and it might work, but it's risky. It'd be better to just do it in the init instead. And you could actually move over your other stuff to the init too if you want to. I'm not going to do that in today's episode, but it works just fine. Then let's go to our new function, our controller connection change. This is the one we made. Okay. And like I said, we set up these, these parameters in here. On controller connection change passes these three parameters. Okay, so we're capturing all of them so we can use them. Now, we can do a lot in here. Right now, it's very simple. All I'm doing is actually broadcasting our event to say, yes, this has occurred. We want to go ahead and fire that off. Okay, so that way we know when controller connection change occurs, we can broadcast the delegate, which then can fire the blueprint event, which is what we're going to use to bring up the widget on the screen. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm grabbing my controller connection changed event and just calling broadcast dot broadcast. Now, remember this event that we set up, okay, it takes in a Boolean, takes in is connected. It's one parameter. So we have to pass it one parameter. 
So pass it the is connected that gets passed in to this function. Okay, on controller connection change, passes is connected into controller connection changed. Then we pass this is connected into the broadcast. That way the widget can also know if the controller was connected or not. Then I just did this for my sanity to help me debug and also just to show you what's changing as we unplug or plug in a device. So essentially, if we are connected, controller has been connected for player, and I'm doing percent %d, which is decimal, which works for integers. And I'm passing it user ID. This is how I can tell player controller 0 or player controller 1. Essentially, player 1 and player 2. So we know which controller has been disconnected or connected. So in the else, it has been disconnected for player. Okay. And so now we need to be able to bind to this event in the blueprint. You actually saw some of the logic earlier. So let's go into that. So go to your default game mode BP. That's where I recommend doing it for now. But you can do it from a bunch of places. You can do it from the controller specifically. You can do it from the character if you only want it to happen when you're in the match. You have a lot of different options here. If we want to do it, I'm doing it anywhere. So I'm going to do it in my default game mode BP. I went to event begin play, at which point this is what I had before this episode. I had set up a game instance reference at this point. Having that set up, we can go ahead and use that game instance reference to now grab our delegate, which is bind event to controller connection changed event. Okay. And so very simple. Like I said, we have this parameter now, this game instance reference. Anywhere you have a game instance, or even if you want to cast to the base game instance from the get game instance node, as long as you're in this base game instance class one way or another, you can drag off of it and type bind events event to. And it'll come up with any of the delegates that are there. Okay, bind event to controller connection changed event. Controller connection changed event right here. So we know that that's the one that we want. So we can do that. Okay. We want to drag off the event now and type add custom event. It will automatically fill out the parameter that we've given it. Okay, because this event holds all the information that we set up. Like I keep saying... We have a boolean is connected. And so now this event knows that it has to send that over to this. Okay. So we have to have this data in this event. So we have to have this boolean is connected here. Now I did that and I just renamed it. You can right click to rename it. You can go to the, de the details panel. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And I just call it controller connection changed. You, again, we have a lot of these like controller connection changed, so you can call it whatever you like. Just so you're not confused though, this does not have anything to do with the actual code function here, this controller connection changed. So I said you could rename it if you want. So you can call it uh, controller connection changed. We could say, um, update controller pop-up or something like that as well. Whatever you want to call this. Essentially, just know that this does not have to be called anything in particular. This is for you. So we might rename this again, whatever, as it fits. But right now, this is fine. Update controller pop-up. Because this is all it's doing right now. All right. And now all we have to do is fill out the logic in this event. We already know if the controller is connected or not. And so we know if we want to spawn the disconnected widget or get rid of it. Now, in the next episode for connections of controllers, it's going to be more complex because we're going to change the delegate into a two-param delegate. That way we can pass in the player ID and set the widget to have a player ID of that value. This is important because we need an owner for each of the controller disconnected. Say both players' controllers disconnect. Connecting one should not get rid of both menus 
or maybe it should, depending on your logic, but we can set it up to where each player has their own menu that they're responsible for. So instead of just one player disconnects their controller, it gets connected back, and then the game's good to go. Each player has to have that connected controller before they are ready to fight again. All right. So let's fill out this very, very basic primitive logic that's just mainly for demonstration and not finished at all. And so I drag off the is connected, go into a branch. If it's true that it is connected, then I want to remove any existing uh, widgets of this type. But we haven't made the widget. So let's take a second and go make the widget. So I'm going to my blueprint widgets, wherever you want it. I have input device disconnected. To add a new widget, you just go add new, user interface, widget, blueprint. All right, input device disconnected. Here we go. So in here, I don't have anything in the graph. I haven't even gone in here. So no events in the graph. Okay, doesn't matter if you leave them or not, but just showing you I don't have any logic in here. This is all strictly design right now. So you'll start with a standard canvas panel. If you're in Unreal 5 currently, if you upgraded before I have in the series, you won't have the canvas panel in there by default. You can add one if you'd like. I started with one since I'm in Unreal 4, it's just automatically here. Didn't change anything on it, but I actually added a separate canvas panel under it. This is so I have the exact size that I wanna work with because as you can tell right now, it's appearing at the top of the screen. It should probably appear in the center or some, you know, some place to grab the player's attention, not just right at the top. By having a separate canvas within this canvas, I can actually do that because I can choose the exact size and position. I just haven't moved it yet because while I literally haven't, there's really not a reason. But I will be, and so I figured I would go ahead and set that up now. So on the canvas, I literally got another canvas panel and brought it onto that. I called this pop-up canvas. You can see it's about half. Well, actually, it's exactly half of the height, but it is the entire width of the widget. Otherwise, I haven't changed anything about it. And then I've just made everything else a child of that pop-up canvas. So there's three components I have on this widget. I have my background image, which is literally an image that I brought onto the pop-up canvas. If I look at it, I have the size set to the same size as the canvas, 1920 by 540, so the entire width and half the height. I have made a little pop-up image here. I just literally went in PowerPoint, gave it a gradient and a border, and used it, but you can use whatever image you want here. I set that as the brush, so... Uh, in the image appearance brush, you can set an image. As long as you've uploaded this, th this is just a PNG. As long as you've uploaded this, you can just select it right here. Be a texture by default. And then you don't have to change anything else, but feel free to if you'd like to. Do whatever you want with it. Then I've just added two different sets of text, a title and a description. So the title, of course, is the bigger text that basically explains what the pop-up is. And then the description is just the actual how to solve it. So I've added, I've added text to the pop-up canvas, one for the title, one for the description. So the title, I've called pop-up title, I've anchored it to the top, middle. Gave it a little bit of offset so it's not directly against the top. Size the box to the content and given it an alignment of 0 0.5. This will make it directly in the center of this box. So as this were to change, excuse me, the pop-up canvas, as that were to change, it would remain in that section. All right. I put in my text here chosen this random color for it you can see my font size and outline if you want to copy any of that and we're good 
Lastly, I have pop up description. I've anchored to the middle, given an alignment of 0 0.5, sized it to content, put my text in here. You can see my text settings. And there you go. That's how I made my entire widget. So you can see everything, change whatever you want, make it look nicer. But just as long as you have a widget in here that you can spawn, you're good to go. Once you've created that, which again, I've called mine input device disconnected. Like I said, if the device is connected, all I'm doing right now, very rudimentary, I am grabbing all instances of this widget and just removing them from the parent, basically deleting them, cleaning them up. So a simple way to do that is get all widgets of class. And then you can select the class type. We're going to use our new widget, input device disconnected. Off the found widgets return, we can go ahead and for each loop that. Then we can remove from parent on the array element. And this is how you would connect it. Okay, so that's what I've done here. If it is connected, we're just getting rid of all the disconnection menus. Again, that's not really good because even if it is connected, it might be for the wrong player, in which case we don't want to get rid of player two's disconnection widget if it's player one that connected their device. But for now, it will suffice just so you can see that you have the events working. Okay, if is connected is false now, that's where we're going to create the widget because we were connected, we're no longer connected, which means we are disconnected. So we quite literally want to create the input device disconnected widget. And the way you do this is create widget. And then you just find the widget. Then drag off of that, and add it to the viewport so we can actually see it. And you're good to go. All right, with that done, everything should be functioning as intended, but there's one small thing that I want to update for you that I missed in the last episode. If we go to base player controller.cpp, set up input component, we had changed around some of our logic to make our player controllers better by not having to do some absurd logic to get the player to determine what inputs to bind. Well, I left an if statement in here that's no longer necessary. We were before checking the game mode player two to see if it was equal to this class or the game mode player one to see if it was equal to this class. We're not doing that anymore. We're just using the actual index of the controller. And so we can also get rid of this additional if statement here where we get the game mode as we never use it inside this. And this is completely pointless. So you can get rid of it like that, make it look better, a little bit better in performance and less confusing. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helped you learn about controller connection changes, connecting and disconnecting controllers. Fun stuff. I'm very excited about it and to see everything else we can do about it and with it. It's very, very unique and very, very cool. Not a lot of things you get like this because it directly interacts with the hardware and I think it's cool to disconnect the controller and see stuff happen in the game because of it. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge, huge shout-out to my Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I'm incredibly grateful, and I really, really love this series. I'm glad you guys are as excited about it as I am. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out and get you sorted so you can keep working on your game and making it better and better. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.